Hello and welcome. Um, today we're going to be working with the March 2018 um, My Monthly Hero Kit. This is the stamp set. I also have the dies. I've already cut them apart and I just put them in a bowl so they didn't wander off. Um, I don't really have a plan as far as the 10 cards go. I'm going to just kind of make this up on the fly and see how we do. Um, I wanted to try a couple things. We'll see if um, they work out. But it looks like it should be fun, so let's get started. All right, for the first card, I thought I would try something pretty simple. I die cut the thank you die out of white fun foam and also white cardstock and then adhered those together. I also have this background stamp. I believe it's by Hero Arts. It's um, True Friend. And I'm going to ink that up with coral ink. And it's the same color ink as the paper, so it'll be a tone on tone and real subtle background. I love this color. It's just so such a happy color. All right, so now I'm going to take my cardstock and put it on top. Ink that all up. And it just has a bunch of friend sentiments, friends, true friends. Everything is better with a friend. And I just thought that fit really, really well. Now I'm going to take my thank you and adhere that to my card. It's such a beautiful die. Um, then I'm going to adhere this to a side folding card base. And I'm going to set a block on here to let this dry. And when it's done drying, I'm going to add some um, embellishments to it. Okay. Um, inside the um, sequin mix that Hero Art sent with in this kit, there was these really tiny little stars. So I pulled out five of those and I adhered those around the thank you. And I know that's really tiny bling, but I really like the focuses on the thank you. I like the boldness of the thank you. And, you know, um, so I thought that complemented the design of the card well. So I, that's what I chose. You could, if you wanted to, put the bigger stars on if you prefer that. But um, there you go. That is card number one. All right, for card number two, I have a panel cut um, by four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm trying the cardstock that came with the kit. This is the Hero Arts White, and I'm taking um, peacock feathers, um, Distress Oxide ink, and I'm going to just sponge some And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to die cut. This is a die cut by Simon Says Stamps. It's um, a bunch of hearts and circles. And um, I'm going to die cut that along the bottom of this panel here. So I'll be back. Okay, so I die cut this card. And I also cut the panel down to be 4 inches by 5 and a quarter. So it would fit on my side fold white um, note card. I also die cut the hello die and I put some white cardstock on the back of some fun foam and I'm going to adhere this down to my card. Um, and then also some of the negative space, uh, pieces of this I saved and I kind of already kind of picked out or arranged them on my card. I just need to glue them down. But I just thought they worked out um, nicely as embellishments. So I'm just going to put little spots of glue and use the pieces that got cut out of the die. And then the last step is I'm just going to put some adhesive and glue this to my side full card. And there we have, that's card number two. All 
right, for card number three, I've already done a little bit of the prep work here. Um, what I have is I have just the word thank cut out of black cardstock. I die cut using a My Favorite Things die, just an edging die. It's actually meant to go on this side of the card, but I think for some reason it just looks odd to me. So I'm going to flip it over and use the other side, and I don't think unless you look real closely that um, you'd see that it's the wrong stitched wet line, you know, like the opposite of the die. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half pink panel, which is going to get adhered to a top folding white note card. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack down my thank in black. And I'm just going to set that aside to dry. And I have um, the U from the stamp set. And I'm debating about what color to stamp this in, but I think I am going to do it in um, black ink. Just so we, you know, they, I don't know. I think I'm just going to do it in black ink. I think that'll make more, the most sense. I was debating about doing it in pink, but. And I'm using VersaFine ink. I'll stick the U right there. And I'll put this back on the stamp set. Um, I was debating about which shape to do this with, but I picked the one that's kind of like a cross. And what I'm going to do is take the, a pink ink that matches that paper, and I think I'm going to stamp a few of these crosses. Let me stamp one. And stamping it, it on scrap paper, just because it's a new stamp, and sometimes you need to work, break them in. There you go, it's starting to stamp more evenly. Hmm kind of debating on whether or not yeah, I'm going to do it. I think they kind of look like sparkles, so I might add just a tiny bit of glitter to these. Kind of like it's twinkling. I don't know. Is that crazy? I think three's enough. Let me set this back on the pink panel. I think what I'm going to do is take the flower from the stamp set and in that same pink, just along the bottom of this panel, I'm going to stamp tone on tone. I just, it helps break up that paper and adds just a tiny bit of interest to the card. I don't know something I like to do. I think it just adds a little bit. And I'm pretty sure the camera doesn't pick that up at all or very little. And now I think I'm going to adhere this down to the card. I think these shapes are too similar, so I think I'm going to get some rhinestones and try those to add a little bling to the card. All right, I added three tiny little rhinestones, um, I just just for a little bit of sparkle to this card. I, you know, just think it adds a little something. But there we go. There's card number three. Alright, for card number four, um, I did a lot of the die cutting. I did all the die cutting first because um, my Big Shot doesn't fit underneath the camera and um, I thought this would save time. So let me show you what I die cut. Um, first off, I have a black side fold card. This came out of the kit. I also die cut um, a series of background dies. This is from Birch Press. It's called Dazzle. Um, it's kind of expensive, but it was, um, I use it a lot, so I think it's worth it, But I, and I love the look of it. But it comes with three layers. So you've got layer C, layer B, and layer A, and you glue these together, and it gives you a dimensional background. And I think with the sentiment set, um, I think it's important, you have to have something that kind of goes with it, and the sentence, you know, make the sentiment stand out um, so there we go. 
out of purple or pink, I'm not sure how you want to describe this, uh, glitter paper, I die cut um, a zigzag circle, which I'm going to put there. And then using the Hero Arts Infinity dies, I cut a circle that's slightly smaller than that. Then I it cut out a black glitter paper, the U, and I pulled off the stamps are awesome, and I'm going to stamp those onto the circle. So let's do that first because I'm going to use VersaFine ink, and this way it can start drying while I'm doing my gluing. Doing my best to stamp these straight. There's the R. There's awesome. Close up my ink pad. And I'm just going to set this aside to dry while I glue down the rest of this and I'll speed this up. So I don't know if the camera does this justice, but there you go. Those are all the layers put together. You can really see there's dimension. Um, if you are new to this kind of die, the cool thing is you can use all three together or you can use them independently. Um, I think you get the most dramatic look when you use them all together. And so that's what I tend to do. But um, at any rate, then into the center, I'm going to glue my glitter zigzag circle. This is by Spellbinders, this die. Um, I'm not sure what the name of the set is, but I'm sure if you put in zigzag spellbinders, you'd find it. It's a really old die, and I'm sure the newer the companies now have similar ones. If you have a hard time, like Lawn Fawn, I think has a similar set. But I really wanted the sentiment to pack a punch here, and I think all the coming together in the center kind of just does it. Lots of drama. And then lastly, glue down the U. I'm going to put a clear block on this to let it dry because I, I think it's going to need some dry time. But there you go, there's card number four. You are awesome. All right, for card number five, I took the background. This is Hero Arts. This was with the. Um, I think it was January add-on. It was that Mandala um, background stamp, and I stamped that and heat embossed it in clear um, embossing powder. I also cut a die cut a heart from the Hero Arts Infinity set, and I'm going to heat emboss the words "Hi Friend" from the kit. But I'm going to use the I, I, I haven't tried it yet, the powder that came with this kit and see how that goes. So I'm going to take my VersaFine ink, ink, oh wait, I'm going to take my embossing tool or the anti-static tool. I always forget that step. Does anyone else have that problem? Alright, so I'm inking up my high friend and I'm going to stamp that onto my heart. And then let's try out this embossing powder and see what we get. It is really pretty. It's very shiny. Um, it has a tiny bit of glitter in, in it, so that's kind of nice. And I think it'll look nice on this background. Um, before I glue this on, though, what I want to do is I'm going to take um, and watercolor this a little bit. I don't know if you've tried these. They sell these at... Um, 
all of the major um, box stores like Michaels and Hobby Lobby and all that but they're pearlescent paints and they show up really nice on black cardstock so knowing that I was doing this in silver um, what all I'm going to do is drop a little bit of color I think I'm going to use some purple I've been on a purple kick lately and some of this um, lighter uh, like a white and the blue and you just let the water sit there and it kind of um, allows the the ink in there to absorb it and become more malleable and I will try to zoom in here in a second but and show you and I'm you know what it's kind of silly that I'm coloring this because I think that heart's gonna sit right on top but that's all right A little color never hurt anybody. Let me hold this up and see. It kind of makes it like it's a pearl essent purple. And it's really sparkly. I just don't know if the camera's picking that up. Kind of see where this heart sits. Well, maybe. All right, that won't show that much. But this outer ring will. So I'm just going to pick up some blue. And do these outer petals in blue. I don't know, I'm calling them petals, but whatever you call these segments in a mandala. Get the blue. And then I think, um, because the purple got covered up, I'm going to do purple in these. I'm not going to color this whole thing. That would be crazy. And I think that's it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. Hopefully the photos will pick up the, the pearl a little more, but it is beautiful. All right, so I'm going to put this away, and I'll let this dry, and I'll come back in about five minutes to finish this card up. All right, to finish this card off, um, I've already put a little bit of fun foam. Um, I just used some scraps up on the back of the heart. And I cut a vellum heart that is slightly larger than the other heart, just using the Hero Arts Infinity heart dies. And I am going to put some adhesive in the back of this. And I'm not worried because the heart's going to cover up that adhesive. So we don't have to worry about that. That's a fairly nice thing about this card. And then lastly, we'll put some adhesive on the back of this. And then center that onto the front of our card. And you could put like sequins and stuff. I like, I'm really a clean and simple person, so the less, less is always more in my opinion. And I think there's enough shine and shimmer going on with the watercolor that I don't think it needs anything else. So there we go, we're gonna call this card number five. But before I set this aside, I just wanna get the dyes out. I was thinking that this might be a really cool one. I like dyes. You know, you could put hugs in the center of this or the thank you. And, um, or the hello, I guess. I don't know why I couldn't do that. Let me get the thank you out. I think this would be a kind of a cool thank you card, too. You know, on top of the, the heart, just die cut in black letter paper or something. I don't know. 
just think that would look really cool. So as you're playing around, I think I might make some more of these with the die cuts just because I think that looks really cool. But I was trying to use some of the stamps I because I tend to love my die cuts. Trying to force myself to use some of the stamps. So I am very happy with how this turned out, but I think I will make some more with the die cuts. So there's card number five. All right, for card number six, um, I thought I'd do a little bit of coloring. I'm going to use an add-on set um, from last month. It's Hero Arts, The Hummingbirds. And some of you guys asked me to use it to use this to make a card, and I haven't had a chance to do that independently, so I'm gonna incorporate it into this and use the sentiments from the current kit. So the, um, what I did was I put the, one of the flowers from the, the set onto a block. And I'm inking it up with my Copic Safe Mark uh, ink because I'm going to use this to stamp um, or to cut. I'm going to use Copics to color. Sorry, I have to learn to think and talk at the same time. And I made a mask already out of a Post-it note. I have to figure out how this goes. I think that there we go. And I'm going to stamp another one. Might have to make another mask, but basically what I'm doing is I'm stamping to make like a bush or a a group of flowers for this um, hummingbird to come and visit. I'm going to move my mask down to this guy, and it's kind of weird that this stem is just hanging there. So I'm going to make it look like it goes behind this. flower okay and I'm gonna switch this flower up for the other one I guess it's the same flower just a different arrangement there's another mask I'll set that on that ink this guy up Let's see. You can hear that our dog is apparently thirsty. Mm. Kind of filling in these areas here. I'm trying to stay on camera. Let's put one and get a little, let me see, I need another post-it note. I'm doing that because I didn't want the stem to show below the flower. So I'm going to do one here and then ink it up again. And I'm going to put a mask over this flower and stamp another one kind of peeking out here. Let's see. Now there is really, I mean, a million ways you can do this. I just trying to make it look like a bushel of flowers or however you want to say that. I'm going to put the mask down here. I'm going to switch back to that original flower. Ink that up. Put one here. So we kind of stamped like the whole, uh, like on a diagonal here with the flowers. And I can fix this little thing here with a black pen that the stem doesn't come all the way down. It'd be way easier just to add that in with a marker. I might just in this space add a leaf just so it's not so open. But I think that's good. So I'm going to put my flowers back onto the acetate. And I'm going to pull the hummingbird. Off, and I decided I really liked this guy here, the one that with, um, it looks like he's coming in for a landing, this guy here. 
going to ink that up. Make sure I got it inked up. And I'm leaving room for my sentiment up here at the top. These stamps stamp very nicely. Um, I love this set. It's so beautiful. Um, hummingbirds are very cool animals. Okay. And while we're doing this, I'm going to put my Memento ink away and get out my Versafine. Now, Versafine um, is not really Copic safe, so I'm not going to use that for coloring, but I'm going to use it for the sentiment so it's a nice dark black. And I wanted to say, you are the sweetest. And I, it was perfect because it says that in the set. So I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to use this. So the first thing I'm going to stamp is the sweetest. Kind of build my sentiment up backwards. Let's see. Okay, I'll put that back and add the R. You know, had a little piece of lint stuck to the stamp. Okay. And then, unfortunately, um, I don't know. I, let's, let's do a little experimentation here. There's not a lot of choices for the word you. Again, if you can hear that, my son's going down for a nap. Apparently not very well. He's up there. We could do you like that, are the sweetest. Or we could die cut a you. And use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do anything right now. I'm just going to, let's color it and then we can play a little bit to see how we want to do the U. And see if there's, I, I don't know, I don't really like how the, the loop of the Y covers that um, sentiment. And if I move it over it doesn't really fit super well. So I might use this U. Which is fine, it doesn't look horrible. I kind of like the... Um, the bigness of this or the uniqueness of that. So at any rate, we're going to color, do our coloring, and then we can decide on how we want to place our U. Um, I'm going to speed the coloring up because this isn't a coloring video and it would be here for a long time. Um, I will put the colors up on the screen um, so you can see what I'm using as I'm using it. Okay, so I glued my panel down to a, um, a top folding um, coordinating card base. And what I'm going to do now is just add some finishing touches and then we'll have to stamp um, our U. But I have a white gel pen here and then I have a jelly roll that's got like glitter in it. And what I'm going to do first is... Um, when I was coloring these, I was like, I'm not going around each one of these little flower parts. So I decided I'm going to go back in with my white gel pen. And I'm not taking real great care 
to get exactly in the image, but I'm going to add some highlights with the, the white gel pen. Just kind of adds a little more interest to the flowers. And it's nice because it takes care of the, um, the, I think these are called stamen. I really like the way it brightens up the card. Just adds, I don't know, a little something. Let me hold that up. Okay, I'm also going to add a, oh wait, before I do that, I'm going to get my black gel pen. And I'm going to color in the eye of the hummingbird. And I just like the way that darkens this up. And I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else with the eye. And while it's drying, I'm going to add a couple little white lines in on the bird. And a few more here in the tail. And the eye's still not dry, so I'm going to still let that sit. Now I'm going in with the glitter, and I'm just going to put in the center of the flowers some dots mixed in with the white. It just adds a tiny bit of sparkle, and I'm only doing it to the flowers that are open. Camera probably won't even pick that up, but it just adds a little subtle... Sparkle. You could do this with Wink Estella if you wanted to. Maybe cover the one flower that the hummingbird seems to be going after. Okay. And just to be sure, I'm going to let that eyeball sit. Let's make a decision on the U. I really do wish I could use the larger U, but I really don't like. Um, the placement of that seems odd to me. So I think I am going to use the U, the small U, and place that above the sentiment. There's that. And I can still see that eye is a smidgen wet. Um, I was looking at the sequins that came in the kit, and I don't know, I just, these white ones are just huge. I don't think that they feel like they match the card very well. I think that detracts. There's slightly smaller ones in here, but I even think those are big. There's a smaller one, but they're still fairly large. So I don't think I'm going to add any of these. Um, I don't think the stars make sense in this case. Let me try a star. Yeah, I just think that looks weird. Not really appropriate. So I don't think I'm going to add any sequins. Um, maybe I'll put a couple yellow ones on there before I send it, but honestly, with the little sparkle in the flowers and the white gel pen, I think is enough with the coloring. Um, all right, now I'm going back with the white gel pen and I'm just going to lightly add a dot for the eye of the hummingbird. I just think this, you know, brings the hummingbird to life. And there you go. This is card number six finished. I hope you don't mind that I did a coloring card. Um, I really do like the sentiments, but it's kind of hard. You need something, you know, to bring the sentiment to life, I think. So needs needs something to be paired with, in my opinion. Um, All right, for card number seven, I'm also using another add-on from a previous release. This is a background stamp. Um, I, I'm really horrible at remembering what months, but it was the month that they did the like Arabian night um, 
release. This is kind of the background stamp that they release with it. It's very pretty. And I thought it didn't have to be like Middle Eastern. So what I did was I, um, I heat embossed with white embossing powder on a piece on a white panel. So right now this is four and a quarter by five and a half, but I do think I'm going to trim it down. I'm just not sure how much I want to trim yet. So I'm going to leave it as is. And I'm going to take some Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to um, sponge ink on, on top of it. So this should work as an emboss resist. The ink shouldn't want to stick to the areas that are embossed. So when we get done sponging, we'll wipe those off and they should be white. Now as I go, I want this to kind of fade into white. Um, I can't remember where I originally saw this idea. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it just was kind of a neat way to use background stamps. So there we have our blue. Close this up. Oh wait, nope. I want to do one more thing. I just have a piece of regular cardstock. I just pulled it out of my scrap drawer. I just wanted to make sure it was big enough to fit the word hugs. And I'm going to sponge half of that with blue. Doesn't have to be super perfect. All right, I'll set this aside. And I'm going to get out a baby wipe that's not real wet. You don't want it to be sopping wet. And I'm going to just wipe off the ink on top of the white embossing. And the other cool thing, the reason I chose to use a baby wipe to do this is that um, this ink reacts with water or the wet so it kind of um, also activates that ink a little bit, makes it a little bit more vibrant and also helps to blend it so you get a smooth transition so it's darker to lighter. So while I have that I'm also going to take my baby wipe and just wipe this to help smooth that a little bit. Set that aside. Now I'm going to take um, hugs and I'm going to die cut that out of this cardstock. Got a little too much blue on there for what I was thinking, but you know what? I, I'm going to go with it. There's no mistakes in stamping, just opportunities, so it might work out better. So I'm going to die cut this and I'll be back. Okay, so here's the end result. We have hugs and it's kind of got this ombre. It's white at the top and kind of fades down to blue. To be, in truth, I got a little more blue on there than I had hoped, but again, I think it'll be fine. I found some cardstock that matched this blue, which is um, tempting turquoise by Stampin' Up! if anyone's curious. Matches Salty Ocean really well. So I'm going to take this scrap piece and I'm going to stamp sending in Versamark ink. And I forgot to use my anti-static powder tool, so it'd be better than I am. I always forget to do that. And then I'm going to heat emboss this with um, the silver uh, embossing powder that came in the kit. That's not too bad. This is a really pretty embossing powder. I think it'd be really nice at Christmas with that sparkle. Okay, so here's the end result. You got sending and it's a nice uh, glittery finish. I cut this down and I'm going to take my scissors and um, dovetail the end of this. And I'm not sure if I want to pop up hugs yet or not. I'm going to play with this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue on a piece of um, Tempting Turquoise paper to a top folding white note card. That's my first step. Then I'm going to here on this panel, I trimmed this down a little bit. It's still five and a half inches long, but it's now three and three quarters inches wide. So this gives me a blue strip on either side of my card and I'm going to put a block on this and let this dry. The paper warped a little bit when I heat embossed it and then probably added water to it to make it worse. Um, so this will help the warping. 
Okay, I got pretty lucky. This dried pretty flat. So what I am, um, while it was drying, I did decide to take my hugs and I added some fun foam to add some dimension to this. You can always just also die cut several pieces of white cardstock and glue them together. Um, I just fun foams faster and easier. I'm gonna glue my sending down, and I'm kind of putting it right where there's a transition between the blue and the white. I decided that was where I liked it the best. Like the banner is hidden under that part of the H and I think that just helps make it look like it belongs a little more. And I'm going to set a block on this to dry. Okay, and just so, for some finishing touches, I took three of the stars that came in the kit. Um, I thought that the silver matched the silver embossing powder, and I also like that these kind of the background has that starry feel to it. So I thought they were appropriate. I'm going to just stick three of them down. And there we go, we have card number seven. Just a fun technique with backgrounds. I like that look. All right, I'm back with um, card number eight. I prepped a few things. The first thing I did is I took the thank you die and I cut that out of white cardstock, so I have the thank and the you. I also took a white panel measuring four and a quarter by five and a half, and I embossed it using my Infinity um, Hero Arts Infinity Circle dies. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this, you if you have a silicone mat and you can set up your embossing machine with your dies and you can emboss with them. Um, if you have more questions about that, I'm glad to answer those, but I think most people have done that. Um, so far. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside and I'm also going to set the stamps so much aside and I'm going to color my thank you with my Copics. Alright, I, I grabbed some rainbow colors. I'm going to um, actually I'll take this one out so there's one of each ish. Yeah, that, that's about right. Um, and I can always go and get more if I need to. But I wanted to make the thank you look uh, um, rainbow. So I'm going to start with my red, and I'm not going to, I don't know, plan this out super well. And I'm not going to do any fancy blending on this. I'm just going to scribble on some color. There's some red. Let's go into orange. You could do this by sponging ink on if you had that. I thought about that, but I thought this was a faster way of doing this for now. And I have a lighter orange, and the reason being is that it helps transition into yellow. So put a little bit of the lighter orange down, and then I'm going to go into the yellow. And as you can see, I'm really not... Here on my table. I'm going to go back into this spot here. That fi the figure the hardest transformation was going to be from the yellow to the orange. I just put a little bit more orange down and then put some more yellow, and that's going to help that transition be more smooth. I don't know if that even shows up on the camera, but you'll have to trust me. And this green might be from the yellow to the green can do that too. So let me get a lighter green. I'm going to flick into that yellow and then I'm going to flick the yellow back into the green and that'll help with the transition. There we go. Much smoother. Alright, so there we have a thank. A very rainbow thank. You can see I missed a little spot right here. Oop. Okay. Maybe I'll come back in here because I made it look darker. Alright. 
Now the question is, I'm going to do some purple. I'm going to work my way backwards. I'm not sure if I want any green on my U or do I want to just do it purple and blue. So hmm. I think I'm just going to do purple and blue. Because I like purple and blue. You could have also colored white paper, which would have been slightly easier without bending your die up at all, your die cut up at all, and then die cut out of that. But this also works. Cool. I'm gonna set all my markers aside. Again, here are the colors I used, all of them. And this, thank you, is going to live on top of this embossed background. And I thought it'd be really cool and pop out. I really like the how bright that is. And then I'm going to stamp so much in black ink just to contrast all that color. And I like this font, the script font. I'm going to grab my mini misty and use my misty to stamp this so much. The reason being is that this is an embossed background and the chances of getting a perfect impression the first time is kind of slim. So let's um, grab that. I'm also going to die cut white foam for the thank you to see if we need to stack that up and actually I might cut black foam. I think I'm going to cut black foam to um, help contrast with those colors and make them stand out even more. So let me go do those things and Okay, so I backed the thank you in um, black fun foam, and I really like that. It helps the colors pop, I think, in my opinion. So I'm going to kind of place this where I think the thank you is going to get glued down. Trying to center that as much as possible. I'm just going to turn this because it will be easier for me to see if it's centered. Okay, so um, here is a piece of black cardstock, and I really like it on the black. I think that pulls it all together. It makes those colors look so bright and fun. Um, I'll show it to you what it looks like on white, but I think, I don't know. I mean, it looks okay, but I think I like the black better. So because I want to write a message on the inside of the card, what I did was I cut a panel that is black, and I'm going to glue that to a um, top fold white card, and then I'll glue my panel on like so. All right, here's card number eight. All right, for card number nine, I'm using this die by Tailored Expressions. Um, it's a balloon die. It's called Up, Up, and Away. It also comes with these two dies here, so you can individually cut the balloon. So you have the die and then the balloons and I'm going to use these to sponge and then put on here so that's how I'm going to add the color and I picked out some inks I'm going to start with
and I decided I'm going to take some of Sukaneko's um, Sheer Shimmer Spritz and I'm going to spray that on the balloon which will help activate the Distress Oxide ink but also just add a nice little shimmer to the balloons. And I'm going to set this aside to dry. So pretty. Okay, let's see if the camera picks that up at all. Yeah, the camera doesn't do that stuff justice there, maybe a little bit. But there we go. Okay. Um, then what I'm going to do, and this is actually the card front. This is a top folding card. I'm going to stamp my words first, I guess. And I'm just going to need my panel to do that. I'll just have to be careful not to touch it. Um, I'm going to stamp It's Your Birthday. And I'm going to use Versifying ink because, I, I again, I've said it a million times, away. it's just a, such a beautiful black ink. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a gray Copic marker to color the uh, balloon strings. Okay, so I did some playing around and I think I made a decision. Um, first, out of black fun foam, I die cut um, Hello, and I added a little bit of that shimmer spritz to it. It doesn't show up real well even in real life, but it's it's there, you can tell. And then I put um, fun foam on the back of this frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm gonna set the frame down and I'm gonna use the star that came with the set. And I'm going to stamp in a variety of the colors, same colors I used for the balloon, in the background. Ooh. I was afraid of that. Alright, I need to move this. I'm just going to have to do the best I can to kind of judge. I think I'm going to start with um, three stars in each color. And if I need to, I can go back and add more stars. Put a baby wipe. I don't want it to be too busy, and the balloons are going to cover a lot of that up. I actually think that looks pretty pretty good. I don't want it to be too busy back there. All right, so I'm going to glue this down. Could leave it just like that. I actually kind of like that, too. I don't know. Should I add the hello? It wasn't going to originally, but then I thought... I actually think I like it better without the hello now that the stars are in there. Um, it looks very mature and nice. So I'm going to just set the hello aside and I can always add it later if I decide, but I think, there we go, I think that's card number nine. Alright, if you've watched any of my other um, 10 cards, one kit videos, um, you know I like to try to do something different or fun for card number 10 a little bit outside the, the standard normal card. So I've kind of planned this out because I've actually I've never made this before. This might be a total disaster. So this will be my first one. It's called a buckle card. Um, I got the dimensions um, off online. Um, I just, just Google buckle card and you'll find them. I'll tell you what they are too, but if it's overwhelming... I'll just Google it. You'll find lots of tutorials on how to do it. So the first thing you're going to do, let me move all these stamps. I was kind of laying this out to make sure it made sense, is you're going to cut a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by seven. And I already messed up once. Uh, you're going to score it at four and a quarter. And that's going to give you this here. Then you're going to cut a piece of... Um, coordinating cardstock, whatever color you want, by four and five and a quarter, and this will get adhered down. This here is, uh oh, oh, it's five and a half by, let me measure it. Like an inch and a half. 
and this is going to become a buckle and this is scored um, at two inches that that part isn't is is important but because if it's give or take a quarter of an inch isn't going to matter in this case I cut a panel the same size as this, which I believe was two and three quarters. Yep, two and three quarters by five and a half. And I embossed this with a cloud um, die. And I took the inspiration from the cloud stamp that's in the kit. We're actually going to use that on the inside. But I it didn't want to take the time, I guess, to stamp all those clouds or... I don't know, I just thought this looked... A little more professional I guess and then I had a my favorite thing sun dye and I die cut a sun so we could use this and I also die cut a five and a half um, scalloped border just to decorate this a little bit the other thing that we're gonna need and you don't have to have this punch to do this it just makes it easy but you need like a long punch this one's by stampin up um, I don't even know if they still make it anymore it's, this is an old punch that they have, like it's old style. They don't even make punches that look like this anymore. But any die that has just a little bit of um, an opening, we just need to cut a slot into the side of the card. So that's all that's important. And that will be, that's the, the, the crutch of it, the big parts of it. So let's actually do that first. So um, I'm going to put my cardstock in. And I think the part that I'm worried about the most is getting this straight. Um, I'm just eyeballing here to try to make sure that my paper's straight. And I'm going to punch out. Let's see how well I did. That's pretty good. A slot from this top piece that's going to get adhered to this panel. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my glue and put on my scalloped border here. Um, technically, if you didn't even want to put a scalloped border in here, you wouldn't have to have this layer. Um, this isn't critical to making the card work. I just think it was, I like the white and I thought it reminded, you know, kind of pulled in the cloud theme that I'm going for here. So that was the important part. Then um, I'm going to open up my card and I'm going to line this up here. And I'm just going to use a tool. This is a, just a like a pokey tool. I'm just putting a, a line on the cardstock here so that I can take the punch and line that up so my I have a hole going through both layers. Hopefully I did that right. Yep. Okay. So then these layers can be glued down. So this, actually I should put adhesive here, can be glued down to the front of the card. This is going to get glued in here, but I'm, I'm not quite ready to do that yet. Um, this buckle, the important piece is you want to make sure it's lining up with your hole here. And the important measurement is that this width will fit in whatever slot that you cut. As long as it's smaller than that or about that, then you are, are good to go. So I'm just going to put this buckle in where I want it to sit so I have an idea of um, spacing. Put my adhesive away for a second. And I'm going to treat this with my anti-static powder tool because I'm going to do a little bit of heat embossing on this panel. And I'm going to use the silver that came in the kit. So I'm going to stamp you are and it says a great friend
So now we have that heat embossed. You are a great friend. So now I can set my um, Versamark aside and I can pull out my glue again. And this time I'm going to put glue on just the side that's going underneath the this blue panel here. Make sure. And I want to make sure this, oops, this lines up. So I'm going to insert that into our latch. And I'm making this flush with this blue card here. I'm not so worried about this piece here because it's not glued down. I just put it there for that for now. I'm really worried about centering it between these two and making sure it's flush with this this edge of the cardstock. So now I can pull this up and put glue onto the back of this piece. And there we go. To close your card, you're just going to slip this in here. And so now the the bare bones of the card are done. Now it just comes down to decorating it and the details that we want to add. So I think that's kind of cool. I like, I don't know, I like this style of card. I've never made one before. It was my first attempt, but I thought that was pretty easy and fun. All right, so now um, my idea for the inside is, you know what, I might round these corners. I just had that idea. I'll, I can do that at the end if we're interested. All right, I was going to put the sun like it was peeking out, like if this was a cloud. So you could see it from the outside, but also the inside. So I'm going to first adhere this sun down in this spot. Oh, nope, I'm not. I lied to you. This missed a step. I decided to take Versamark. Versamark is not always, um, it's good for um, embossing, but it's also a good watermark. And I was going to put just a couple clouds here in the background of the sun. I don't even know if that shows up on camera. You get that. Yeah, I can kind of see it. So there's just a couple clouds there. Might put. And stamp that one very well. Just to add a little more depth to the inside of this, I'm going to put my cloud stamp back on the stamp set. And now I'll, I'll figure out where I'm going to put my sun again. And I'm going to stamp this in VersaFine ink. Hopefully, whoever gets this will kind of think the same way I do. I'm like sending lots of sunshine. There was no word. There's no sunshine in the set, like the word. And I, I almost went back. The bird set had sending you sunshine. I almost did that, and I was like, no. The whole point is to use um, the sentiments from this kit. So um, I, I decided to just go with this and see how it turned out. Okay, for a little bit more of a finished look, I grab my corner rounder. Hopefully that'll... Okay. And I think that is card number 10. So there we go. I open it up. It says, sending you lots of sunshine. I thought that's different. I, um, I actually really enjoyed this. I was, I'm going to have to think and see what other cards I can come up with that uses this format. I just really like... This is just different, and I like, obviously, different. So um, thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, I also want to send out a huge thank you to everybody who watched my husband's video last month. He was over the moon. Um, he just could not believe all the positive things you said, and he's just delighted. Um, so much so that he has a secret plan for a card this month that I have not seen. Um, this is to, I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so um, might have to wait till the weekend for him to film it. But we'll see. Um, if he does get it done, I will post it on my channel so you can see that as well. Um, he, I, I've been assured that he's gone over, over the top and he's outdone himself. So <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he has. He's a funny guy. And um, I just really appreciate all the support and the continued um, nice comments. It really does help motivate me. Um, this kit, I love this kit, by the way. Um, but 
it was really, really hard to come up with cards that only use the products from this kit. I, I try really hard to do that, but I've pulled in more products this time than I've done for any other video, just because I don't feel like it's a standalone kit. I mean, I know there's some people who make cards that, but how many of those can you make? It wasn't a very diverse kit. So um, it was more important to me to make cards that I love than to follow ru some arbitrary rules. So um, I kind of just went through this and hopefully you like these cards too. These are ones I would make and send to my family and friends. So I, I feel good about that. And um, at any rate, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Sorry, I'm rambling. And I will hopefully see you all again next month. Thank you so much. Bye.